Well, shares of the company formerly known as Facebook tumbling this morning, despite the fact that it's a green day on Wall Street. Meta platforms down 6% after the company reported its first ever drop in revenue yesterday. But the company's longer term big bet remains the metaverse. The problem, the company is now guiding on lower revenue from its virtual reality division, Reality Labs. So the question what does Mark Zuckerberg need to do next to deliver on his vision for the future? We'll take a deep dive into the tech of it all with Roni Abovitz, founder and CEO of Sun and Thunder, as well as Yahoo Finance's tech correspondent Dan Halley here for the conversation as well. Uh, great to have you on the program, Roni. Just want to ask you kind of first of all, what do you see as the strategy for Facebook? I mean, it seems like they had a pretty big loss. They lost about what, $2.8 million on this business. But this is a long-term play, right? Do you think Meta's got it right? Um, I think they are betting long on the idea of a system of systems we call metaverse, which is really, it's like the evolution of the internet with a lot of amazing, interesting features. So I don't think it's something completely new. And, and I think they're actually quite smart at betting in what is going to be the internet that most people experience late this decade in the 2030s. It's like being early to the internet, like in the late 90s. So uh, Mark sees that future. I came, uh, was part of that. And I, I think uh, it's quite interesting, actually. Yeah, Roni, let's talk about your experience. Obviously, a lot of people know you as a founder of Magic Leap. I mean, you have been deep in this space for a while. I feel like there's still no clear definition of what exactly the metaverse is. And, and Facebook has somehow popularized the term, and yet you said that they're really tackling a very small part of the broader potential. Yeah, the simplest way, the soundbite, I think, is um, think of a meta universe. And the idea of the universe is the sum total of all things, like the entire internet, how it evolves, all the devices in it. Uh, but the ones we focus on in particular are the augmented virtual reality components, but there's the whole 3D game engine world, there's decentralized computing, there's crypto and blockchains. But when we look back at it, if we're in 2035, we're asking what is the metaverse? It's the all pervasive internet that's spatial, that touches all parts of our lives. And it's this merger of digital and physical. Uh, so it's basically the internet today will look like newspapers from the 1950s uh, as, as you experience like what that metaverse system becomes uh, in the 2030s. Uh, Roni, this is Dan. You know, I've, I've spoken to some people who have kind of, you know, discussed how the metaverse isn't necessarily just what we're seeing here. This is obviously meta uh, and what they believe will be the metaverse. But uh, they've discussed how, you know, car windshields, uh, if they're smart windshields, you know, obviously we have some. Uh, holographic displays now, but they're talking down the line, uh, smart glasses, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be something on your face. It could be your phone, your your uh, PC or your Mac. That's still part of the metaverse, right? It, it's not just limited to, I got to, you know, pony up to a, a desk and strap something on my face. A absolutely. The way I think of it is like, right now, we're on the surface of the metaverse. Uh, the, the metaphor I like to use is like, you could dive deep into the ocean, you could go into the coral reef, but the phone, the tablet, the laptop's like being on a glass bottom boat looking in. Uh, if you play games like Epic Fortnite, you're beginning to peer into what a future metaverse may look like in one version. Same thing with like Roblox. Uh, you could do that on a phone, on a laptop, on a tablet. If you go more and more immersive, and it's very likely that future generations will discard the tools of their parents, they're gonna wanna use their own things, that immersiveness, and as those technologies get better, you're just going to see a population where today we might have tens of millions using XR and billions using mobile phones and tablets and PCs. My thought is by 2030, we probably have a billion daily active users of XR. So, uh, Roni, I You'll guess- You'll still have the others. You'll still have all the other devices too. Those applications you know, sound like a lot of kind of like leisure, but at the same time, we've heard a lot of arguments for Metaverse having a real application in enterprise and in the workspace, right? You could have virtual meetings, you could conduct it, especially in this post-COVID world where a lot of people are working remotely anyway. So how do you find that factors into kind of the future of this uh, technology as well? It is totally not limited to entertainment and gaming. Uh, I think healthcare, it's, it's incredible what you can do. Uh, I think all forms of business, business travel, communication, co-presence, how we meet, how you do Yahoo Finance in the next you know, decade will likely change. Um, there's something amazing and incredible about having like realistic presence that you could do instantly instead of having to travel. So there's actually a green energy component where, where travel might become something not through Zoom, but through something else that really feels very incredibly realistic. Uh, obviously there's some use cases in defense, uh, in factories, in empowering workers. Uh, one thing that's super interesting is the idea of empowering uh, like a blue collar worker to become a blue collar tech worker. I used to call that like Tony Starking someone. 
so that uh, you have suddenly superhuman capabilities, whether you're on a construction site, whether you're uh, in a factory building something. So it's not limited to kids and games. It could be something that billions of people around the world use to make their job better, more amplified. Uh, all of the media and creative aspects are also amazing. The storytelling aspects are also amazing. So that all sounds amazing in terms of potential, Roni, but the Quest 2, which I have, is not a comfortable device to wear. It gives me a headache if you wear it long enough. We've already heard about you know delays with the AR headset for Meta, Facebook, uh, the Apple headset probably not coming out until next year potentially. I mean, how much is this vision contingent on that technology, those headsets, all that following? How much of it is about more and more content being created so people have a reason to dive in? I, I think, first of all, it's it's a number of things coming together, right? It's a circuit where all the circuit pieces have to happen, but um, you need device excellence. Um, I think everyone knows what the top of the mountain looks like. It's lightweight. It probably combines augmented and virtual things. It's small. It could run all day. You could use it everywhere. It has like retina resolution. Um, and people are investing billions and billions of dollars, some companies, tens of billions uh, to get there. I mean, I, I worked on this for over a decade. Um, I think we are going to get there. I've seen what the technology will look like by the end of the decade, and it is going to be incredible. Uh, and, and there's things coming out this year, uh, even things that you're starting to hear about right now show at uh, Augmented World Expos and things like that, that are hints of what that, like a tipping point of what really great technology looks and feels like. I won't comment on, on, the, on the Quest 2, but I'll say that VR as it is could be much, much improved. Uh, Roni, uh, I just want to ask, you know, I, I saw how we could get from, you know, our laptops to smartphones. I, I guess, for myself, I have the hard time going from my smartphone to a, a display, you know, wanting to strap something on. You know, I, I guess, how do you get there? How do you get consumers to want to do that? It's it's not a simple problem at all. Um, I, would, I would map it this way. You need the robust ecosystem of software. You probably need a new generation. It's very hard to get someone that's um, fixed in a certain way, used to using something that just completely changed. Like it was very hard to get people to, you know, get on Instagram or get on the mobile phone for a while. Um, that took like a multi-decade process. So my view is it's going to take, you know, throughout this decade and into the 2030s, but systems need to be lightweight. They cannot be heavy. They need to cover your field of view in a natural way. And they also need to be what I think of as like biomimetic. You can't have any feeling of nausea or dizziness or anything with these devices. That means the optics, the compute, all has to be like really thoughtful, almost like a biomedical bio, biotech device where you just understand what the eye and brain system want and you build technology to matches that. All right, Sun and Thunder CEO and founder Roni Abovitz, as well as our very own Yahoo Finance's Dan Howley for that conversation. Thanks so much for joining us.